now that I've explained masters and that we're actually not going to use them for this exercise, let's get some all the content that we need into this document. So we're going to do um, headlines, subheads, and copy. And that's part of the copy deck. So you see here, actually, let's do the front first. So logo, company tagline, get fit and go outside, and then let's put an image. I've already downloaded the images. I haven't downloaded the um, EPSs yet, so I'm just going to click on those and do that as well. They're not compressed, so they're just, they will download. Okay, so let's do the front of the, the brochure. So I'm going to be on page one. I'm going to just move this aside a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to draw an image frame, that box with that X through it. I'm going to do full bleed for now. I'm going to do it from top left to bottom right bleed line. And I'm going to go place. I'm going to locate one of those images. Let's see what I got here. What do I want? Which one do I want? I don't want it to be a busy background. And I want to put an, a logo over it and a little bit of text. So I'm going to probably use something like, let's do, do that one. Oops. Okay. So it imports or it places um, quite small. It is a small document. If you go into your links window, you can see that it's just a 339 by 509. It's just a comp. It's just, sorry, it's just like a, a low res thumbnail image downloaded from Getty. So it's not the actual image that we'd, find, we'd use in a final document. So it's gonna be small. Don't worry about that. You go object, fitting. Always click on this first one, fill frame proportionally. If you don't do that and you accidentally go object fitting, say um, fit content to frame, she squished. And when I click on either the little bullseye here or use the white arrow to select the image within the frame, in my control, I will see that the vertical and the horizontal, um, um, I always forget the name of this, what is this? Um, scaling is, are there, they are different. And so we know that there's this image is stretched and she looks stretched, she looks like way too skinny. So if you accidentally do that, don't worry. You can just always go back, go back to object fitting, fill frame proportionally. Alternatively, I can do a right click command or um, control to click and go fitting fill frame proportion. Um, that makes me think there's one other thing that I should probably remind you of. Uh, I'm going to press W for a second so you can see what the, um, the, the artwork looks like without those um, bleeds and margins. Alternatively, you can click on between the normal and the preview mode as well here, down here on the tools. So W is the hotkey for that, or down here at the bottom of the tools. Um, if you accidentally forget not, like to not have bleed, so press W. So that's what it's gonna look like when it's printed. This is what it looks like when I'm just kind of in my working mode, right? I can see my bleeds and my margins. Um, if you don't have bleed set up, if you forgot to do that when you set up the document, I, you can always add them. So don't worry if you forgot to add them. You can go File, Document Setup, <clears throat> and that will then give you that opportunity. Oh, they moved it. Oh, no, sorry, I'm sorry. Here, it's right here. Sorry. So that's where you'd, um, you'd add if you forgot to add the bleeds. And they've now they've moved it to margins, right? Margins, it used to be in a separate area. Margins used to be under layout and margins. And you can still access it there, but they've actually added it as well here now again. So if, you, if you've forgotten to do the margins or you've forgotten to do the bleeds, you can add them after the document is set up by going document, sorry, file, document set up, and just add them there as well. So just wanted to remind you of that. Okay, so there's W, or you can switch between preview and what do they call it? Preview and normal. Okay, so there is an image um, on the front. The next thing you need to add is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, um, uh, logo and the tagline. So taglines, remember, they're not, um, well, well I'm, taglines are kind of associated with a brand. They're not headlines necessarily. They're something that would, would um, follow a brand throughout like many types of um, advertisements. For instance, like obviously we know ones for like, um, like Coke is it, um, just do it. So those are like, they're part of branding. They're not necessarily headlines. In this respect, we're kind of going to use it as a headline, but it is technically what would be their tagline. So something that would be used throughout uh, many of their ads or marketing. Um, I'm also going to put the logo in there. Um, I can put the logo. So there's two ways I can put the logo. Images, 
we can, I drew a, an image frame and, and then placed it. You can also just place it without drawing an image frame. Now, the reason why I don't do it when I'm um, doing um, images is because you'll notice when I do it, I just go file place and now I drop it or um, click on the artwork. You know, it's just kind of placed within, you know, wherever on the page. I still need to expand the text, the image frame, blah, 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 blah. That to me just seems like way and then to fit it way too much work. Alternatively, I prefer just to kind of say, okay, well, I want an image here. So I'm going to draw the image frame, super easy, quick, go file place, locate the image. Okay. And then you still need to go object fitting. It just feels like one less step to me. It just looks way more neater and cleaner. But when we're working with EPSs, you might want to do it the other way. You might want to just go file place as opposed to first drawing an image frame and then locating. I think I just put it on my desktop. Oh, no, it's probably in downloads. Yeah. Okay. So here are, there's two different ones here. Now it loads on the cursor on the, on the, and now that's the complete logo. Now, what might be nice about doing it that way as opposed to going, drawing a frame and then going to file plays and I'll get the other one just so you can see the other version. So now when I um, first draw a frame and then place the logo, it's the image or the, uh, the frame is not large enough or doesn't, you can't see the entire logo. I still need to go object fitting. But when you do that, you might notice that I still don't have, if I click on that little bullseye, you'll see that there's still more um, logo than I can see within this frame. And so um, when you're doing working with EPSs or logos, often are EPSs, you might find that that's often the case. And so, so it's still like, I might need to like re, I need to, I need to see the entire logo. So in this case, I might go shift holding down and dragging one of the, um, the handles and I still need to kind of like finagle with it, which it's really easy then to kind of like accidentally not have a little piece of it cut off. Um, you, alternatively, I could after I have, I'll just do it again and go object fitting full frame proportionally. Alternatively, after I fit proportionally, I can go and only after I fit proportionally, I can go fitting, um, fit frame to content. And then I can see the entire logo. So you have that, those two steps. You first need to fill the frame proportionally, and then you have to fit the content or sorry, fit the frame to the content. But to me, again, that's just like almost too much work. So I go file place when I'm working with EPSs and logos and I just, and now I don't have to go through all those extra steps. Now, obviously it's too big. It's like, it's going to be, it's enlarged. I can't put this huge logo on this image. So I still need to resize it, but now I don't have to like fit and fit the frame and fit proportionally and do all those extra steps. I can just hold down the shift key, the shift command key, shift command. And when I go slowly shift command, you'll notice that I'm actually resizing. It's actually technically I'm resizing the frame and the image within the frame, as opposed to clicking on that bullseye or using the white arrow and then holding down the shift. When I do that, you'll see that the frame still maintains that large frame, which is technically okay. But if I want to now use the align window, it's not going to work or like try to like, it might, you know, cause some interference. It might be hard to select it or whatnot. So I want to resize the frame and the image within the frame at the same time. So I'm going to hold down the shift, use the black selection tool, hold command shift, holding down the command shift or control shift on the PC and see, I didn't do it slowly and it didn't work. And actually, actually had the image within the frame selected. So I'm just going to do the, try that again, command shift. Now I'm moving the image and the frame cons uh, simultaneously. I just thought to show you one more thing. If you accidentally have something else selected like this image and you go file place. So say you didn't realize you had like you still had this image selected. And I go file place and I select one of those logos. So obviously going um, to place it in that image. I can just go um, command Z and then because I've already <coughs> sorry um, clicked on the place, 
I have that opportunity just to go click again. So just know that, that that's a possibility. I'll show you what th that looks again. If I've accidentally just forgotten to deselect the image once I've you know added that image and I'm trying to place now the logo, it's going to obviously place it within that image frame. So I'm just going to go Command Z or Control um, Control Z or Edit Undo Replace. And then it's still that placed linked logo is still kind of active. So I can just kind of click and um, place it. So just so you know, that's a possibility. Now, when I see these kind of side by side, I'm thinking maybe I'll use the black one. Oh, let's see. I'm going to move this off to the side a little bit. And then I'm going to I'm just kind of add this. Now, if I hadn't like resized the frame and it's just I have this image within the frame and I have a frame that's too large for the image, I can't use this align tool as easily. So now when I try to go align to page, it's actually going to align the bounding box and not the, the, um, the, the logo image within the bounding box. So that's why I always want to have the um, frame and the um, image within the frame to be um, tight. Um, okay, because I want to be able to use the align window. So um, if I've accidentally not um, um, uh, resized the frame to, um, to be the, the same size as the image, you know, and if I'm trying to use these align window, uh, window, it just doesn't work. So now I know I can go fitting fit frame to content. And then when I try to align to say the margins, it's going to play, um, it's going to align properly. If I, if I don't have the bounding, if I have the bounding box too, too large, it's actually going to align to the bounding box and not the, the actual image. So, you know, I have a flat bottom here, so there's nothing to say that I can't have this. Now, if I want this way at the bottom, you know, that looks kind of cool. Um, I can try the, just, just for fun, I can try this one at the bottom and center it. And I'm just going to hold down the shift, shift command. I'm going to hold down shift command. Oh, see, I didn't do it slow enough. Shift command and resize the image and the frame at the same time. It doesn't have to be massive. Now it's kind of over a part of her body that's maybe not quite appropriate. So I'm thinking that's not going to work in that placement. So, and right above her head also looks a tiny bit weird. You know, there's nothing to say that I can't now, um, um, rotate this, um, this, um, logo. If I hold down the shift, it will hold, rotate it by 45 and 90 degrees. I don't know if I want to, I'm just trying this out. I've never done this before. I know maybe it's centered or maybe I do it like this, holding down the shift to, um, angle it or rotate it 45 degrees. Maybe it's something like that, or maybe it goes down here a bit. Maybe it goes pressing W. I rotate it shift holding down the shift maybe it goes here to the margins that looks okay I'm kind of happy with that you know maybe I reposition um, her a little bit so I'm just gonna move her to the side a little bit um, so I don't see her left or right arm maybe actually enlarge her as bit a bit so holding down the shift I'm just going to resize the image within the frame so she's a bit off centered maybe something like that I just want to see her elbow a little bit. I'm just um, moving, moving the image within the frame by hold, by um, clicking on the arrows. Okay, W. All right, I'm just gonna move her a tiny bit, maybe something more like that. Okay, last but not least, press W. Maybe the, the white one would be better. So let me just see what that looks like if I go file place, as opposed to like having to redo all that whole, everything I did with that white one. Let's see what that looks like. Press W. Holding down um, con control Z to, and command control Z. Oh, what am I doing here? Do. Control command Z, no, command Z. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing that wrong. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Okay, and then last but not least, I need to get the um, the tagline or kind of header on here, get fit and get outside. So copy that, press W, press tab to get my windows back, get, grab a text box or text frame. Um, and maybe it makes sense to, you know, maybe it makes sense now if I know I'm gonna add some 
um, text here. I'm going to put this way at the bottom and then grab a text frame. I'm going to draw it from the margins, paste it. I'm going to select it. I'm going to, in the paragraph window, go right align. And I'm going to kind of try to match that to some degree. So in my character window, I'm going to say maybe you'll have whatever fonts that you have loaded on your machine. Um, maybe I'll just do a Futura. I can't remember how what I designed that. that um, <laughs> what font that is. I'm totally forgetting. Maybe it's something like that. Maybe it's like this becomes my control. Maybe this is not medium condensed. This is, oh, I wish I had a different Futura. Do I have a different Futura? It has a lighter weight font. Let's see what I got. Now I'm going to be a little bit um, decisive about what font I use because I probably want to use the same font throughout the document. Um, I have another version of Future that has lots of weight, so maybe I'll do this light condensed. Um, and so what I'm, oh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to use, I think I'm going to be, um, I'm going to use, where did that other Future go now? Oh, there it is. Um, maybe then that just gets light and that's uppercase as well. Expand that. So I'm going to use, I think I'm going to decide to use Futura throughout the document. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to see what it kind of looks like here. You know, maybe I want to um, track it out a bit. Maybe I want to make it a bit bigger. Not that big. Um, and maybe I want a hyphen just to be really weird, a weird design. Maybe this is um, just light as well. Maybe this gets tracked out a lot. So I'm just playing with it. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just trying things about a whole bunch of things out to see what they look like. Um, you play with that. You make it look how you want it to look. Um, maybe this lighting gets changed. So, um, but I'm, my, I am trying to say is that, press W, I want to, um, I'm going to use, I've decided now, you know, based upon the font that I'm using for the cover or the first page here, I'm going to decide to kind of use that Futura font throughout the document. So uh, you don't have to do that. You can choose a different font. Um, I, my preference is always to kind of keep it simple. So choose one font that has lots of different weights and use it throughout the document. And hopefully those two don't look, I mean, this O obviously looks very different than O, so they're not necessarily matchy matchy. Um, but just to kind of like complement um, the logo and the image. And I think a, a font like Futura, for, for my taste, is kind of going to work well throughout the document. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to use the same font throughout the document and um, kind of decide um, if I want to use it on this first page and kind of play with it and see if it's going to work, if I feel like it's going to work throughout. So in the next um, video, I'm going to show you how to now do paragraph styles for headers, subheads, and the copy.